The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be Sorry, go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. This man needs medical attention. Holmberg's morning sickness. The old method of treatment for a person in this condition was to throw him in jail. Uh, and uh, keep in mind that coming up on October 30th, all things, uh, as Brady would say, God willing, Night of the Singing Dead 2 is happening once again as sodomizing Linda resurrects the dead band members of past and does a whole night of a Halloween party over there at Stand Up Live downtown. It's going to be a blast. We're going to be at Copper Blues right there next to Stand Up Live downtown. Uh, loads of uh, bands with dead guys in it. We got, I mean, all the way from ACDC, the Bon Scott years, Slipknot. We got, because uh, Slipknot's got two dead guys in it now. Any band that's got dead guys, we've gone through the list. And, we've, and, and I'll tell you, I'll give you a little hint. Biz Marquee makes an appearance. A week. Yeah. It's all over. It's a party. We're going to have a good time. Uh, that's not all official yet, but I can't wait for it. And Heavy D? We, t- we talked about, not Heavy D, we talked about doing uh, Humpty because he passed away in the last year too. There you go. And it was between Biz Marquee and Humpty because about the same time. And uh, one seems more fun live than the other Okay, uh, to do with rock instruments. We got some fun stuff on this. Okay. It'll be good. And I'm being put to the test as a vocalist. Because Cinderella has a dead guy in it. And the, the boys in the band are like, you're doing it. I'm like, God damn it. That's not going to be any fun for me at all. Def Leppard's got a dead guy in it now. Yep. Uh, Cinderella's got a dead guy in it. I want to try to get an Elvis song in there, but we're struggling to find one. I want to do Bossa Nova Baby. I was going to say, that's your favorite. That's you know, the that best one Elvis song. Of, I love that song. One of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. And Elvis would be great. We we're, And also we're doing... Uh, a ghost song because they're technically undead yeah. and we, and we just really yeah. like their songs. Yeah, yeah, I like I, it. I, I, we got it. So stay tuned for all that stuff. I also want to say that, uh, dentists, you have to look out for this. Halloween's a coming. Uh, however, uh, something in me cavities, uh, left and right is happening at my house now regularly. And I can't get enough. And Toledo has been watched Ted Lasso, yeah. which I finally am, am watching. And uh, on the recommendation of a lot of people, I am always disappointed. And pretty much everything that I watch, by the end of it, I'm like, ah, Squid Game was great. The ending, everybody's kind of in the same page of like, well, the second season has to fix the ending. But there's more to tell us. I really enjoyed Squid Game, but it was a low bar. I didn't know what to expect, and I just liked the violence more than anything else. The last episode, you're kind of like, all right, I'm kind of sucked in for another eight episodes, I suppose. Um, Ted Lasso is like one of the most saccharine, sweet television shows. I, I, I watched, uh, there's one episode where Ted Lasso has a panic attack, and uh, my eyes welled up. And I realized, oh, no, I care about Ted Lasso. I, like, have feelings for the people on this show, which is the whole objective of entertainment is to make you empathize with the characters. The worst part about it is, is that I've come to realize, remember when Jason Sudeikis had Olivia Wilde and before that, yep. he, uh, his laundry list of women while he was on Saturday Night Live was unreal. And no one could figure it out. He's not that funny. He's funny. You watch this show and you realize, I'd lose my wife to this guy in a, in a second. Yep. Like, he's the charming. most charming, likable person on the planet. And Ted Lasso, I couldn't give it a, a, a bigger thumbs up. Brady, you got to get on this one. And I'm the same way. It's like, ah, oh, there's so I, I can't binge watch. I can't do I'm only like eight, nine shows in. I didn't want to watch it. I'm like, oh, there's so much. And I'm just going to end up not liking it. And it's, it's, and the first couple episodes, you're kind of like that. And I know I'm behind the eight ball on this one. A lot of people have seen it. But it is, for a sappy show, it's really good. It's good. But it will drive cavity holes through your teeth, right, right past the enamel and right into the heart of the tooth because it is sugar sweet to a point of almost nauseating you.
But at the same time, they tell you he's too uh, optimistic and sweet. It's annoying. But you get to season two and uh, you see Roy, uh, Roy's niece, yeah. what she draws in class. It's going to be a big dick, right? Be awesome. Okay. Well, I'll be excited about that. <laughs> that's coming up in my life. Yeah, I just wanted to finally, because that's, that's the way the world works now. We don't all have shows we watch together. Yes. We have to start telling Recommending. stuff. And, and endorsing this. And somebody told me that. And this guy I don't trust that much said it was good. And this guy that I trust said it was not good. And you have to do it on your own. And I can't stand this new way of television. I like the old-fashioned week-to-week thing. There's something about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, the, the thing I like about it is there's – so many programs out there and to hear someone say, okay, you might like this rather than, you know, I hate it. Having it like a, a blockbuster every night. What am I going to, I can't out? stand it because like I've always compared it to Remember at Buster when you used to go and they had the you bin stand there. Well, yeah, but they yeah. had the bin. That's called the dichotomy of, or what is it? The paradox of choice. Paradox. Yeah. yeah. The paradox of choice. You get the bin of DVDs that are a dollar. There's going to be good ones in there, but do you want to sift through all that right. and take a chance? That's what Netflix is to me. Like I look at this and I'm like, and again, the paradox of choice is basically a math equation of your brain saying if there's too many things to choose, the average human chooses nothing or falls back to something they've already seen. So you give somebody 20, that's why I, I can't go to the Cheesecake Factory. It's their Huge menu, menu. Yep. is the paradox of choice. Uh, yep. Gordon Ramsay was keep it simple, stupid. You give them too many options, they choose nothing. You've made it too hard. You make them read. And it's true. If I'm like, I've got 40 things to choose from, I don't want anything. Like, I, 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 I feel like my chances of failing are bigger with the more choices I have. Because now I'm like, well, I've wasted my time. I should have gone with the other thing. So now you're going, I just, I can't stand it. And you can still have messy fail the way you used to watching TV when it was week to week. But at least they had something to look forward to. It's the first time I've actually watched something. And I'm like, this isn't like letting me down. I'm entertained and I actually care about the characters. It's weird. It's a feel good. And it's also not cheap feel good. Wasn't what I was expecting when I'd hear like everyone when they'd oh, say you got to no. watch Ted Lasso. Yeah, I well, thought like, it was kind of like a, it's legitimately funny, like legitimately funny, and also so sweet. It's sometimes like ugh. I thought it was going to be parody at first, and that the Same. character would wear thin. Doesn't he gets uh, better and better with and every he gets, episode? He gets better. Yep. He gets more likable. Yep, and you like everyone on the show, even the bad people. It's it's yeah Ted Lasso and the way he really deals good. with people treating him like crap is it's a life lesson yeah and it's annoying it's a very special that. blossom with I dick jokes that, and they're right. funny like the jokes are great yep and Ted Lasso is a guy you wish you could be oh that you like you know the way we always say Brady's with the rose colored glasses <laughs> that's come only uh, like ten times more than Brady even does because Brady's a cynical dick deep down we all <laughs> we see it in reality he doesn't want to be but deep down he is. I don't think Ted Lasso sees the world that way. It's pretty great. Good show. Uh, we killed Woody. Uh, you can still text Woody, 97936. It is announced. I didn't know. I don't care. Uh, go off and have your life, Woody. Uh, tried to come in here and steal our money, and we uh, got rid of you, which is nice. Uh, but his show isn't over yet. I guess it ends Friday, right? Last right. day's Friday. Yep. But uh, KDKB is going to need another morning show. And evidently, it's going to be a music-intensive morning show. So... Let's do some auditions. A lot of posting. Let's do some auditions. It's time to p- play the post game, everybody. We're going to post some uh, alternative rock songs. So we'll get on the KDKB playlist. And you guys, and I look, let me tell you this. You can't do worse than 20-something place. I don't care if you're, you could have a, look, Brady's got a speech that made it on this that You could go, Brady, you could by yourself go over there and do better than 20th place. Woody, that, that whole crew's kicking themselves. How so? The guy can't even read. How does yeah, he t- yeah. And look, nobody's figured that out. Even I haven't figured that out, and we're looking at you every day. I'm like, well, it's working. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> it's it's an invention where you're like, it actually gets – it's like anesthesia. We're not real sure why this works, but it's working. But, yeah, Brady, you could go down there and try to just be you all alone and do better than 20th place. Nothing to it. You, It's hard to come in 20th place. It is really hard to, to fail that badly it's hard work you say that but man there's been if a lot then there's some, been some Brady, guys really good at it if i if i went on and stopped trying people would listen to see how lazy i was it would still be better than 20th place 
If you go and put an effort in at all and come in 20th, that's hard. On that stick, I get that. On because you're looking, anything. Mm, bad at their job. You get over to the AM. If you're just good. Let alone trying to get registered. If you're a little bit good, you'll crack top 20. I don't care if you're on a one. Like you have, <laughs> Not on the AM. Oh, pfft. A.M. Shmayam. You could if you do a good thing, you'll crack the top twenty. You know how easy it is to crack the top twenty? So easy. You get one listener that has one of those monitors. You're in the top twenty. Yeah, I mean uh, you, I, it's it's easy. Top tw- if if top twenty was my goal, <laughs> I could have done a show during hip surgery. <laughs> It's hard to come in 20th place. You have really got to be unlikable. You really have to be doing nothing. Especially on the, again, the position on the, on the dial. Oh, yeah, you got, oh, well, you got all the weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he did it. I'm more impressed that he came in 20th consistently than ever tried to come up and compete with the bigs. I, I don't know that I could put an effort forth that would come in 20th place. The music alone should keep you in the top 15. You'd think. Like someone should like it. Yeah, it's damage, right? That is scorched earth. Anyway, uh, auditions for you guys. And I do believe we have tickets to uh, shows that I'm not paying attention to right now. What's out there? Richard! i to find out what our tickets are. We'll give you tickets to a tool? show. Oh, do we have tool tickets still? Maybe. Oh, we might give you some tool tickets. We've got a whole bunch of shows coming to town. We'll give you tickets to a show. All you got to do, uh, do we have tool? Oh, okay, we got tool tickets. Well, this is a big prize. Right there, we'd come in 20th to say, and we got tool tickets. Unless a Mercury playoff game breaks out, then tool will play at 3 in the afternoon. You'll get those. Oh, go f- yourself, Mercury. Uh, anyway, uh, tool tickets on the line. You just have to post the songs that we give you. And posting basically means we start the song, we tell you how long it is, you tell a story, you get the call letters in, you say your name, you give us something engaging, and then you hit it right as the singer starts singing, boom, you're done. You can, 93, 43, 43. We'll even do their call letters just because we, you know, we'll, come, we'll help them come in 20th today. Post it! Coming up next. Big, red, and badass. It's the natural way radio should be. 98. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.